we have seven years we can change that prayer changes things I say we can change that everybody is shouting Obi 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 did you hear God call Obi in your ears if you didn't hear God go back and cry tears and say God I want to hear Obi so I can be saying the right thing not just because Obi is a righteous man he has a track record for righteousness so I vote him have you inquired from the Lord before any battle was fought from Israel the king will stop the army from going out Saul will say go and inquire of the Lord first shall we go shall we not go David will say go and inquire of the Lord shall we go or shall we not go we are so tired in Nigeria that anything that looks righteous we are ready to line by it so obedience comes we are lining up our obedience have we asked the Lord is this the man or you have another way by which you will save us find out the way oh articulate it Atiku, Atiku, Atiku because Atiku has said if he dies he has already announced it to the whole world Okowa will become president and Iboman will become president so that these Christians should follow PDP is that your only reason? Oh, Asiwaju, he has the money to buy Nigeria and buy the whole earth. Didn't Abiola have the money to buy Nigeria and buy? Don't you know Abiola was sponsoring the budget of nations? Nations in Africa. He donated to them the budget that they used to run their governments for two, three years. Abiola, this late Abiola. Did he reign in Nigeria? Did that qualify him to reign? The church is disappointing God again. Nobody has gone to ask the Father, where is the Savior? We are asking for crumbs, second-hand bread. We are committing the sin we seen in 2015 again, in a different way. I want you to sit down for a moment. There is that song that ends with a chorus that says, is it bringing everything to obedience to Christ? Yahweh, Yahweh, bringing everything to obedience or something. How can you run <laughs> when you don't know the way of the Spirit? Have you asked for the way of the Spirit? How are you running without asking? Wait. I hear pastors on their pulpit already singing a song for Obi. Did I hear God say it's Obi? If anybody had, let, it, let us share intelligence report from heaven. What did God say to you? How did he say? Let's judge the prophecy. But if you don't hear, all you want is Buhari must go. Everything Buhari must disappear. Is that all? A good, what, what do they call it? Is it a gang reaction? There is a word they use in English. A something reaction. You are just following bandwagon reaction that's the word it's a bandwagon reaction we hate anything even a mosquito can rain but not buhari and apc is that you yourself are you not foolish are you not worse than the apc what if somebody with seven kobokos take over and rain whose koboko has iron attached to them Look, God does not make mistakes twice. If something went wrong in 2015, have you asked what happened to make it go wrong? It's not because you didn't vote. It's because you sold out. Have we repented for what went wrong? We have held repentance prayer, except repent for the real thing. I've been in repentance prayer. It's too general. They don't repent for the real thing. The same leaders who brought in Buhari, And said it was wisdom some of them are the same ones 
either calling Atiku or calling Obi. The ones who said, Don't say the Lord. Somebody was reminding me of a very popular Nigerian international preacher who came and abused all the preachers in Nigeria, said, We don't know anything. Atiku is the hand of God. He even abused that they are able to abuse everybody in his writings where is he to call himself a false prophet we are committing the same sin nobody has asked for the way of the spirit of the Lord can we go back and repent and start a genuine prayer and say Lord for now this man seems to be the one who, to clear your conscience but father overthrow my will let your will take over and don't feel embarrassed by it I'm not against any of them but has the Lord called any of them to you if he has not you should be ashamed of yourself why can't you shut up and stay there for seven nights, 30 nights and say, Lord, I won't eat until you tell me. So when you start speaking, your voice will be the minor mi minority, but you will bring down the program of heaven and it will be happen according to your word. I'll give you an example. This same man that won, I didn't know him. Four years ago, or three years ago, three years ago, yes, I took a foil along with me. I don't know who else was with me. Austin, were you there? Kenya. Eh? Gabriel, where we break the pot at that uh, latitude? We, we went to Nakuru first. Very good. They are here. And God gave a very mysterious prophecy against Ray Laudinga. And God said, until his foundations are repaired. God didn't say he can't be president too, but until his foundations are that there is a God has a problem with his foundations and demons have problems with his foundations he's owing them restitution he's owing them money he's, you know when you owe Satan he collects you and I said because of that it won't happen. Instead, the mantle will drop on one whom they never thought can become president. One who held the clothes while blood was being shed. Who held their clothes? Who held them? He was like their messenger. The mantle will fall on that one. He knows all their secrets. He knows their iniquities. He knows what to repair of the things they have damaged. Because he was part of it and saw it all. He knows how, how to turn the economy around. He knows what to do. Except he chooses not to do. And if he does not do it, God will wipe his generation. God will cut him off in the day when he is in power. I was preaching. Not knowing that the wife of that man will come in. When the wife came, I saw the wife. Ah! This is the man. This is the husband of this woman. That is the present deputy vice president. That was the first time I was meeting with the wife. We have never met. We were never introduced. I said, Madam, come out. The pictures are there. I have the pictures in my phone. If I offer delay, send me all the pictures this time around. People were afraid. That night, Archbishop Kitonga was there. Bishop John Kimani was our host. He didn't know what I would say. Maybe that is why he has not invited me again. So I don't break another pot. How many of you remember John Kimani? He was in this meeting. One of the conferences a few years ago. This year, many of them began to call me and tell me that your prophecy cannot come to pass. Before I knew during this election, that prophecy was passed. It was 
forwarded all over Kenya. I've forgotten about it all. I just knew that it was not God's will for Rayla Odinga to win because he has not settled his fees with the spirits. Let him go and settle it. Now, I'm talking freely because I'm in Nigeria and we're about to handle the Nigerian situation. How comes that we are bold to become an army to deal with Satan when it does not affect us? When it affects us, we are not ready to make the sacrifice. That's the problem with Nigerian Christians. They know how to give medicine to other countries, but they cannot sincerely feed on the same tablet that they fed other countries with so that they can be healed. Today, we break that cycle. I say we break that curse in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout Amen! If we stop the wicked in other countries, we should stop the wicked in Nigeria. Oh, I have the tapes. I didn't know it circulated into Zambia. All the countries have been to before the election. And all those who are our followers, those who come for our meetings in their thousands in these countries were holding their breath. They never confronted me with it because they were afraid. Why? Because they thought that Ruto was losing the election. At first, the polls favored him. Getting closer to the election, the polls disfavored him. And I said, oh, even if the other man wins, he won't rule. And this is his last chance. He won't have another chance to try again. So for him, he said, do or die to rule now. Because it's now or never. People thought he would die before this election. But God kept him alive to glorify his own name. I'm talking about Odinga. There were people who thought he would die before the elections. In fact, some of them prayed it. God refused to answer their prayer. Because they wanted to rob God of his glory. so that God can correct the foundations of Kenya. God is doing it for good, not because he hates a family. God never does anything out of hatred. Everybody say, God does everything out of love. Even when he holds the stick over me, it is love. I didn't hear somebody say amen to that. Because God asked me tonight to launch out an army from here and call all of Nigeria to go back. He said they are repeating the same mistake again. They are not asking me and they are running. They are repenting but they are not asking me. They are already choosing their candidates. The same mistakes again. How comes that we can hear for other nations and we cannot hear clearly for Nigeria? We are lying all these foolish prophets, stupid prophets who do luku luku first. Calculate two plus two. When they see the sun rise and it's slowing down, they'll say it's because Atiku is slowing down. So Atiku won't rain. And when they say the sun rise earlier than uh, six o'clock, they'll say, ah! Jagaba don't do it. Oh, now Jagaba they come out. Interpreting according to what they see. And what they calculate. And they won't admit that is their own professoral skill. And they say it's a dossier the law. That's why these days half of the prophets in Nigeria are getting the prophecies wrong. Because it's two plus two. This time the weather is so bad that it is so confusing. Nobody is sure of who will win. Obi is rising like a wild wind. But even if he wins the presidency, he has nobody in the parliament to make him rule effectively. Except if all of them decide to resign and enter his party, which is possible. They can win in other parties since Nigeria is beginning to allow it and then all flow to obedience and become LP. Very possible. 
But it's un most unlikely that he will get enough to rule the parliament like that. We are all using our brains without thinking. God, if Obi is the right person, raise a standard of the parliament for him. Pray a holistic prayer. And if I think it's too late in his cycles, Lord, raise a substitute. Oh, I see what is already falling down even before he has become president. He walks and he falls. Don't laugh at that. A man was walking and falling in the U.S. and still won the election. So don't think those miracles don't happen. Don't, don't underestimate the power of the spirit and of the spiritual. So every calculation you are doing, where is the one of the spirit? We will repent here and tell God we are going back. We are watchmen. We are going back there and we will scatter the spirit realm. Scatter the wicked for putting a blindfold on our eyes. For making fear move us to make decisions. We just don't want to go through this cycle again. That's why we are all rushing into conclusion. The Muslims are as confused. But one thing they know that since the Christian seems to be waking up, a Muslim must be king. Even if the Muslim were crawling on the ground. That is one thing they know. I have watched some of their tapes. They are sheikhs. Who told the Muslim, wait, we will show these Christians. They are mobilized. We are mobilizing. Let me tell you. No matter how much you try to rig, you cannot rig more than the northern house of Fulani factions. They've been doing it for ages. You are just trying to come in because you are angry. Oh, you are being prejudicial. Now, let me make myself unprejudicial for the lawyers that are here. Have you not seen the last report of the Electoral Commission. It says not Western Nigeria, not West. We, Kano, and the rest of the states under the North West, we have the largest number of votes right now for Nigeria. We, Katina, not West, has the largest. Not North East. Did you hear what I just said? And when he talks about Northwest, three quarters of those votes are coming from all the Hausa Fulani Muslim areas. It has nothing to do with the Christian areas. For every Christian area, they have ten times the votes. So, how is your brain calculating that you can still win the election like that? Now you understand why I sat on the ground. Except God speaks for the poor, whether they are Muslims or Christians this time. Remove that your Christian noise and Christian toga and ask God to speak for the downtrodden. They left behind. Did you hear what I said? And they don't have religion. They left behind. Religion is not their problem. It's their stomach. It's infrastructure. If you speak for them, God will answer your prayer. Whether you are a Muslim or a Christian. But if you continue on the religious tone, you are going to lose this battle. Cry for the weak against the wicked. Whether they are Christians or Muslims, it does not matter. Wickedness has no religion. Did you hear what I said? Wickedness has no religion. Muslims are wicked. Traditionalists are wicked. Christians are wicked. Wickedness has no religion. Righteousness has no religion. Is it, it is eternity, eternal life that has its rules and regulations. So can you 
stop making it look like righteousness is Christianity. Because there are more wicked Christians than there are true Christians. We are watchmen. Today, let the Lord purge the insanity from our heads. Otherwise, we are going to lose this thing. We are going to lose a righteous king coming up. Let me give an example. Shagari was a righteous king. Wasn't he? He was. Was he a Christian? Let me give you another example. That one is more controversial. You are free not to agree. But from what I know, Obasanjo in the second coming was a righteous king. Now that is why some of you say, no, no, no. If you say he held the Yorubas, that's fine. Small. Not fragrantly anyhow. But this telephone you are using to abuse everybody. Obasanjo opened the gate for you. Obasan just set us into a new age and break us from post early independent seasons. Not even Shagari. True or false? During this time, Muslims prospered. Christians prospered. During Shagari's time, Muslims prospered, Christians prospered. It was a level playing ground. They are the two major men that made level playing grounds. Oh, you say you are forgetting somebody, Jonathan. No, 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 no. Jonathan neither opened gates for Christianity nor opened gates for Muslims. Eh? Jonathan's regime allowed everybody fight for himself. If you had more power than the other, uh, enjoy yourself. If you don't have power, wait until the day you develop power. That allowed corruption, those who had power to be corrupt, to grow so corrupt. Did you hear what I just said? I said, Buhari, I mean, let's speak the truth. I know I'm in a peace commission. Buhari gave one religion an advantage. Maybe not for religious reasons. And gave one side of the country a greater advantage. And whether knowingly or unknowingly made a religion stronger than all the others. That's Buhari's case. And I have a right to my opinion. And the Spirit of God seems to agree with me on this. Whether recently changes have started taking place and Christians have been put into places in the last six months or one year does not matter. Buhari didn't start in the last three years. He has been there for eight years now. So one year small offering is not enough to overturn eight years of foundation digging. It will take time before anybody catches up in this country. Now we are all dissatisfied. Why don't we go to the kingmaker? Whether you are a Christian or a Muslim, and say, kingmaker, can you intervene? Instead of following sentiments and anger, nobody is asking God. Everybody is following emotion. That is the protest I hear God saying. What have you done about it? That's why I said tonight. I may not finish tonight. I'm just laying a foundation. I'll continue by the next meeting. But we need to go and sit down. And tell God to overthrow all the altar. Let him walk inside. Why? Because the poor, those who are not privileged, are dying. They are cursing. There is no longer rule of righteousness in Nigeria. No longer. We 
need God to overturn all the systems. Whichever way he wants to do it, let him do it this year, not during the election next year. Let us see the sign this year and then let us know what kind of vote to vote next year. I repeat, let him do it when? So that we will know what? What kind of vote to? Everybody say vote next year. This is the part one of this. And by the part two, I will tell you who God is asking us to vote for. And if the answer does not please you, then go and do your own. Go and ask God and let that one save us. That of Kenya. I was praying for the future of Kenya. I wasn't asking God passionately, seriously. It's not my country. I didn't bother who won. I did my own judge, but groaning for the future of Africa and in Kenya. And that meeting was a prayer for the nation. It wasn't a normal meeting. That was why I was invited to speak about the coming elections and to speak peace into it. We were praying for peace and God started doing ufofo. He started opening my ear eh, to gossip what will happen. He told me what to say and what not to say. I didn't tell them everything, no. But I said enough to put me into trouble and blaspheme the name of the Lord if God does not carry it out. To ban me from Kenya permanently. I said enough for that. And everybody was afraid that the curate they love, they were going to miss him. Because he missed one prophecy. All the other prophecies God has used me to make in Kenya came to pass. But this one was the toughest of them all. The election riots and killings, I had prophesied it in the same Kitonga's church. Unfortunately, the platform I prophesied it, half of that building got burned down. It became a victim of the election violence. But I professed on that altar. They had the video. And God has been speaking. Africa has not been listening. Same thing for Zambia. I told them the end of the former regime had come in Zambia. A new regime was coming. But because of the righteousness of the president, God might extend him a little. God refused to extend him a little by two years. Otherwise, God would have had to, had to kill him so that he might live because of his righteousness. God removed him when he should be removed. But God said, a woman is coming as a president very soon in Zambia. A woman president will rise in Zambia. Now, I don't ask for these things. I don't fast when they come. It's after he has shown me that I start fasting because I become afraid. And Nigeria, God told me this is the year when the turnover starts, will take place. It's not at the election next year. I repeat, God said this is the year when the turnover, it's not at the election next year. So I don't know how to start shouting one name when he didn't call a name as a turnover this year. Actually, let me tell you the truth. Maybe God to, to make it more difficult for all of us. That's why Peter will be shining. If Osiba and John had won APC, Peter will be his name won't be shouting like that. I want to repeat, let's face the reality. Even among Christians, if Osiba and John had won APC, and let me tell you, God is a funny God. He has a way of casting shadows on the one that might have been the best in his infinite knowledge maybe that best will have caused us more problems we don't know he did not take number two in the election he took number three and that is a very bad result forgive me i know i'm talking on television and i know some television stations will refuse to carry this go to the youtube you will watch it freely 
So I'm very sure. So I'm not going to encourage them to send them on television because they will show it. It's too hot. Oh, there are preachers have preached here that the television stations refused. They said it was too hot. Number three. And yet of all of those candidates, including Obi, is one who has a sanity. Eh? To do engineering work slowly, but permanently. Now, let me conclude by telling his story. I told you this is part one. I'm coming back to the part two. And I'll give you more scriptures. I'm going to give you the prayer scriptures that you are going to use to pray. Let's use it to challenge the Lord. And I'm done for tonight. And by the next meeting, let's bring everybody. Rosh Hashanah is our next meeting. Come, let's cross over together. Our next meeting is, Sept is uh, uh, September what? Or is it October? Is it October 2nd or September 20 something? Have you announced it? 25th? Is that the Rosh Hashanah? Our next meeting is not the Friday, the last Friday. It is the day of Rosh Hashanah. The beginning of a new year for Israel. The day when it is believed Adam, uh, 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 Adam was created in the garden. We will believe that Nigeria will be created also that day. You must bring everybody, bring your children, bring your family. That's where we are finishing this part too. Bring everybody. And tomorrow, I wasn't in the last meeting. Both this one and the one in Abuja. So tomorrow I'll be in the one in Abuja. Early in the morning I'm, flying, I'm moving straight to Abuja to hold the national altar. I started this year. I'm going to continue in Abuja, but not the part two. And not this part one. I'm just going to enter into a small dimension and we'll raise a cry for Nigeria in Abuja tomorrow evening. So you see, I'm not resting yet. I'm going from altar to altar in the morning. But listen. Ah. Shall we rise up on our feet? Amen. grace. How sweet the sound that Oh God, save Nigeria. I don't like holding some night meetings. Can somebody shout Amen? Amen. I was God's God will find us this year. If we miss it 2023 if 2023 does not become our jubilee ah uh, nigeria might hardly find its feet again again so if you want to permanently relocate out wait till 2023 then you can find your way to the neighboring country and build a new house get a new farm and those of you who cannot dig in and then those of you who your whole community will have to migrate to the south for protection go to the south you know i once told you that there was a time i was carrying out that idea for southern kaduna i once confessed that on this altar 
that I was thinking about that. I actually went to beg for land from a governor. In case the fire becomes too much here, rather than all of us die, let's migrate for a little while. When Nigeria sees three quarter of us migrated to a new place, the world will come down from where it is to come and fight for us. While I was busy begging those governors, the Spirit of God came there literally to me. They didn't say no, they were willing. And said, Did I send you? Why are you so desperate? Why are you in despair? I said, God, because I've not heard you speak and we are dying. Will you wait until we all die? And I'm a leader in my time. History will not record that I did not do anything. You told me to go back home. I would have been enjoying myself in Abuja or in America or London or somewhere else, Canada, preaching the gospel with great congregations and still winning souls for you. No, you insisted, you knocked me, you break the legs of my children just to keep me in Kafanchan. And now in Kafanchan, you are torturing me. Lord, you have not answered. That is why I'm looking for. Plan. They call it Plan B. Is it Plan B? Somebody called it. I said, I was looking for Plan B for Southern Kaduna. Those who cannot be anymore, free of land, child, will divide it like in the day of Israel. Joshua divided the land to families. I literally begged for a land and I got it. I won't tell you which state. Where nobody will disturb us. And God said, go back home. Go back home. And I came back very fierce. And I stopped the talk and I said, you are not talking again. I said, please. The master said, I should shut up. He is confusing me too. I should go back home. Listen. Sit down. Because if you stand on girl, you will start. Now that you are awake. Listen. 2015. The first thing the church used to do is repent. We were to get it right. We were not against anybody. We were not against Buhari. We were not against anybody, any of those candidates. Many of you had my prophecy at that time. I saw Atiku. Even before he was elected PDP leader. I saw him standing for the presidency. But how many of you remember the prophecy? He had no cap on his head. That means he had no crown. And then, he wasn't wearing proper shoes. He was wearing slippers that this local house man wears that sells sugar cane. How can a president be wearing slippers and his normal traditional cap that he wears when he wears that kaftan? And he was wearing the kaftan. I remember the color of the kaftan. If I, if I see anybody wearing it, I will tell the person to stand up. But I remember he has that kaftan. I've seen him wear it before. He was wearing that captain, but with slippers. And God said he will win the party. So, when PD people will call me, Ah, sir, I have sons in PDP and APC. Who will win in our pit party? They had all lined up behind Tambua. And somebody else that time. While they were there, they were calling me. on the day, And I said, Atiku will win. They said, then we are changing. We are going to Atiku. I'm talking including governors. I'm going to stop there. I'm not going to call names. But including governors. Sorry. Who had planned for somebody else? Atiku, Tambuwal, I don't know that plus Wiki. But there were contestants there. But Tambuwal, I remember Tambuwal very well. And Tambuwal was a favorite. I think Saraki. And this, I said, Atiku. Overnight, that night, they changed their stand. There they were lining. They were called betrayers the next day, but the person they stood for win won. That is the same prophet. I didn't go to the newspaper to announce that. 
Those of you who are in the National Assembly prayer breakfast, I repeated that there. Our members who were there, I repeated the same thing. I know the high rate in the Lord say, and I know they increase and they stop there. Whether it gives solution, it no give solution, no. Now where it stop, me and they stop. Then I saw Nigeria without a president. I saw that from the day, the first day Buhari came, that there was no president on the seat. So who was ruling? I don't know. That is why there is jaga jaga everywhere. God is not ruling. Whatever spirit is ruling, is ruling. They say something, there is something about about void. Uh, is it, you cannot, something about void, you know, power, you can't leave a void. But then in the spirit realm, there was a problem. And I couldn't hide it. I said, somebody was, so some people say, well, since nobody was on the seat, I think we will win. Not without a cap. And I told them, I told the Lord, Lord, if you want a ticket to wear a cap. Because they were going around greeting. Ah, forgive me, Muslims look down on Christians. And a few Christians have made themselves our voices. So much that the Muslim cannot discern the right voices to go to. And the wrong ones. They were to come to PFN. I was the national secretary of the PFN. I said, ah, Father, if it is your will that Atiku wears a cap, when he comes, tell me what is the reason why the cap is not on his head. The same thing I prophesied about Elahu. And tell me why he's wearing shoes and not wearing shoes, slippers. So that we can carry him through deliverance in the day when he comes to look for our vote. Make him wear a cap because we need somebody to claim that seat. Because as long as there was no cap, he had no chair. Now, I'm telling you the story of what happened that time, which I told the fathers. And I spoke it, national television was there, NTA. But they cut off that one and they spoke about my talking about a new constitution and unity. Yes, I spoke about a new constitution. But I also spoke about Buhari and I spoke about the president. They didn't put that one at all. They would have closed down their television. NTA was there. National Assembly. PK, were you in that meeting? Kevin was my oddly that time. No, was it Kevin on him? I can't remember now. Because I have the pictures. The present secretary, Mustafa, boss, was one who represented the president in that meeting. Uh, this man, Dogora, was in that meeting. I prayed for the two of them. The pictures are there. Tell them what was the will of the Lord. That is why they don't come this way anymore. They are afraid the will again will be too wicked. Or will not favor. That's why the wild wind is busy dealing with us. Like somebody said, once and for all, let God deal with this matter. Let us rest. I said, I'm happy Nigeria is coming to that place where they don't care how God does it. Let him do it. Are we all in agreement on this? I wish we had the same spirit that time. And I think we sent some people to me as secretary to the government. I know their names. They were former ministers in Jonathan's government who were Christians. They were the ones, one or two of them were the ones who took him to Oedipo and took him to other people. But to meet PFM, because they had met, I mean, they had met Bishop Oedipo, and I, I don't know whether they met that they are boy. I think they did. They decided PFN didn't matter again. The fathers of PFN, they have met them and the fathers gave them blessing. So the fathers will command the PFN. That's why I like the way that the Adeboe does his things. If you go to him, he will say, whatever my fathers in PFN, <laughs> when he wants to dodge somebody, he say, whatever they say in PFN and can, I will follow that one. My vote is their vote. Even if they are wrong, I will do their will. I've had him say that several times, not once. He said, go back to them. And he will sit down and keep quiet. And he has vowed he will never divide the church.
But they refuse to come to the PFL. My president, Omobude, is there, Reverend Omobude. Omobude told them, if you want to fix a date, meet Kure, because I will want Kure to be in that meeting that day. They wanted to go and see me Benin alone. He said, no, you will see us as an executive. So they came to my house in Abuja, claimed that upstairs. I remember that day, I entertained them. And they said they wanted to see us. We fixed a date. And they said they were going to tell Atiku. And they will come back. And I said, God, except if Atiku does not stand there. If he stands here, I don't care how many Christians are there. If I pray the same way for Obasanjo, Atiku will go through deliverance. Because we want a correct president with a correct atmosphere and spirit around him. Not spirits of witchcraft that have their contentions from their found, his foundations who have troubled him all his life not them following him to rule in Nigeria with him there will be more confusion no? he has to go through that deliverance so I hope one prophet that God has not sent is hearing this tape so that he can go and carry do the deliverance if he can because God has not changed his mind God has not changed his mind. And that is why it is difficult for him to be my candidate when I know what the Spirit said. He has not seen God put a cap on his head again yet. If during the prayer in these six months, I see it, I will tell you, I saw it to change your mind. Let's articulate. But I have not seen. Neither have I seen, let's be obedient. When I hear... You will hear. I will lead the way. The church must go back to its creator. The Muslim imams, if they truly claim they hear God, the sheikhs, let them go back to the creator. Nigeria needs help now. Any seer, anybody who is connected to God must go back to God. Don't follow emotions of religion and kill ourselves for nothing when the Almighty has not spoken. And then we had this meeting in Lagos where all our organs came. Now, I'm not going to tell you that story plainly. So allow me talk in small parables. And a few of us from the north warned them that Buhari was not the one. Humanly speaking, I had a conflict. I was already emotionally, not emotionally, physically actually close to Sibanjo, very close. We had done quite a, a few things before the elections. I mean, before his candidacy. So when they came and said he was the, what do they call it now? The running mate to Buhari, I became confused. I had a choice. Should I be true to God? Or let the friendship be cloud me a little let me step down my high horse and flow with the people. And then they annoyed me in those meetings. How did they annoy me? They said, because of the vice president, all Christians should vote for Buhari. I said, what? Is that what the Lord has spoken? Everybody ignored God though. They said, it is being logical. He is a pastor. That day, I remember the contribution I made. Number one, I said, a vice president has no power. He lives under the magnanimity of the president. He can be there throughout Hotone. Oh, they said, no, not Buhari. Buhari is not like that. Those of them who knew, hey, Buhari likes Christians and Muslims. They started talking military thing. He's a military man. There is no Muslim Christian in military. I said, when Satan has chosen a candidate, he's no longer neutral. I see in the spirit. They now ask me, what has the Lord spoken? I said, the Lord said, Buhari is not God's will. God didn't say, Osibanjo is not God's will. No. He said, Buhari is not God's will. So if Buhari will be the one leading as the president, it means it is not God's will. If Osibanjo will be leading as president and Buhari as deputy, it is God's will. Not because Osibanjo was a Christian or a pastor. 
because there was a light in him shining I didn't see in the president okay uh, maybe if we chose him uh, maybe if that is God's will uh, God will kill one I said God does not work like that he's not a murderer he, uh, he, he commands absolute obedience first so what are you saying I said don't vote Buhari do we vote Atiku I said Atiku doesn't have a cap on his head Kure, you are confusing us of course the prophets confuse everybody I said, let God's will be done. Let's allow God unfold. Bishop Oedekpo was in that meeting. He raised his hand and said something that annoyed people. Everybody got angry. They angered him so much that he carried his things and walked out of that meeting. I won't tell you where he stood. I'm only telling you where I stood. It is him to tell his own story. Why he walked out of that meeting. Because he was one of those who didn't agree with the Buhari candidacy. He had his own reasons, not my own, not like my own. But his reasons were different. He had his own facts. He walked out of the meeting. And when he walked, of course the followers followed. Those who were pro him there followed. I sat down. I was watching that meeting. But that was the meeting. They did something that pained me, but it was also the right thing. They refused the right vice president addressing us he was to come to address he said no you won't step in here we're not talking and that was a good principle for the church but the same people who spoke there went out and became the missionary for buhari same people the same fathers after hearing god's will and they convinced so many christians set platforms the muslims should not deceive themselves Buhari was Christian candidate because of Osibanjo in 2015. That was where the Christians failed in God. Because it's not about Buhari. Christians vote, voted for uh, Shehu Shagari. It's not the first time Christians are voting elections in this country. They voted for Shehu Shagari. Voted in mass. Shehu Shagari was a serious Muslim, but he was a king for all of us. When I say serious Muslim, he prayed five times a day. He did all his things more than any other fanatic I know. His Goshi will tell you that. His Goshi was so dark. Then you know who he was a pious man. Up to the time he died. So it's not about Christians. Those who truly serve the Lord can descend a clean spirit. Now look, to let you know the light in Osibanjo, have you not noticed any time they gave him to act? Nigeria suddenly came alive. Lit up, light flowed. Even if it's one sentence he made for that one week. The economy begins to grow. Everything, everybody is happy. So they stopped making him to act. I told them, he is a vice president. You can't, God will show the president mercy because of him. But no more than that. And God showed Buhari mercy because of, he had an altar as an assistant. Even in the dead bed. To punish the Christians, God will not hear those prayers of those ones who are asking Buhari to die. Look, it is true that there were those who prayed, who thought he would die, so that Atiku may take uh, Buhari. I mean, uh, 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 Buhari will die, so that Osibanjo can take over. It's a truth. Somebody said that some time ago, and in my heart, I said that person is telling the truth. Now, listen. Buhari has finished his own. Can we go back to the Lord and correct the mistakes we made? One, let's repent that we were the horses that brought in our oppression. That is where we start. But if we don't admit our sins, it means God was a foolish God in 2015. We are not trying to blame God. We, I can Allah, but I can Allah, 
It was answered prayer for some other people. It wasn't answered prayer from God. The church, the same people are now running around. In fact, quite a number of them are part of those shouting disobedient things. I said, what kind of Christians is this? Did they hear I don't say the Lord? And these are people who teach you prayer like never before. It's not the issue about Igbo or about Yoruba or about Ausa. It's the future. Who has God sent to deliver Nigeria now? From all these rulers from independence who have bought us with our money. Thank God the Igbos even have something to be united about. The Obiti is slowing down some of their divisions and their causes. But that is before Obi came up, the Igbo race was scattering completely. That's the truth about it. So Obi is fulfilling his destiny in being the peacemaker and the one restoring a nation. But is it his destiny to rule as king? It's a different matter. Whatever happens, he is fulfilling a prophetic script. I want to repeat. For Obi, whatever happens, everybody says he's fulfilling a prophetic script. But whether that script brings him as president, as the medicine for the future, I'm not too sure yet. And I had the law. I said, God, is the solution there now? He said, no. The three presidents or presidential candidates or four, the, there is no solution in any of them. I said, God, what did you say? I repeated again. Did I hear you right? Is the solution there? He said, no. The solution is yet to come. How many of you remember what I told you some two vigils ago? I said, judgment must go forth first. How many of you remember that? Then the way of the Lord will be opened. The judgment has not finished. We are already waving our flags. And judgment began and is still going on. We have not, Christians have a way of forgetting. We have not allowed judgment. That's why I'm going low. When the judgment is over, come back in two, three months' time and ask me who the president is. By November, most likely I will tell you. The end of November. But the judgment is going on. Do you even know whether will be will survive that time? Already there are those passing a gossip that there is an attempt to kill him. How many of us know tomorrow except God? So can you be careful? Do you know that see when you will reach December? Do you know that Tiku will see December? That one is in the hands of the Lord. Kai, do you know whether Buhari will see December? Anything can change. Why don't you go back and say, God, finish your judgment. Trouble him about that. And let the road open. That's the conclusion of the matter today. Before the part two. When you will see clearly. The same way God made me sit on the ground and said, what about you? What have you done? What are you doing? Are you clearing the way? Or you are just folding your leg and asking me to do something? Oh yeah, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I confess. Is it today we are hearing confession from all our bishops? If their confession had that kind of power, we would have had a different president in 2015. It's not a confession issue. It's not a positive confession issue. Somebody has to bold face, look God face to face, mouth to mouth, and settle this matter. Hmm? Not take his word and confess. We have confessed his word for many years over this nation. Sometimes that word, but this time, you must hear from the mouth of the Lord and you must run with it. Don't go and represent falsehood that it is the Lord. The Lord does not rule by a Muslim or a Christian. The Lord rules by a chosen one. 
for that season. You didn't hear what I just said. Maybe I've made it more difficult for many of us. You have been waiting for me to talk. I've kept quiet. That's why when they called me here in Southern Cardinal to put them out. I'm keeping quiet. Because our situation is even more difficult in Southern Cardinal. It was easy before. It's no longer easy. We need to hear from the Lord. And I tell you as the Lord leave it. This time around. I must hear from the Lord. How many of us are ready to join me in seeking God's face in this next two to three months? Every month asking that throne of judgment to sit. How many of you are ready to dedicate yourself to that? Or you just want to run away with your imagination? I wish you well. Now, God is no longer looking for 100 people. If you can find a righteous man that can enter into his bones properly, he will shift the tide. Why? Because Nigeria is a firstborn of God for Africa. If Nigeria loses it, Africa will lose it completely. If we lose it next year, many African countries will go back to slavery, including Ghana, including South Africa. Nigeria is a first fruit for the salvation of South Africa, Ghana, and the other nations. Kenya is the man from the east. God has used them as an example to show that he is ready and is about to change the tide against the majority wicked, the majority unrighteous, the majority oligarchy, whether they are Muslims or Christians, does not matter. Kenya is an example. Are we ready to bring that tide here? Man from the East. How many of you know that Kenya belongs to East Africa? How many of you know Kenya is in East Africa? Because some of you, Garika de Kukechi, Chetuo, go say in the when the Garia Keba, whether it's north or south, at least you know the name. Kenya is in East Africa. And the angel of the east is normally a messenger to the nations. God has used the east as an example. Shall we rise up on our feet? Carry your, 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 your book, your paper as you rise. I'm just going to pray and we will close. And I will allow you to go and think about these things. And enter into your new place. Please, let me tell you. God has just cleared the atmosphere for you in the midst of all the confusion to keep growing and creating a new thing for yourself. So go back and grow your businesses, prosper. Get in all the prosperity. Don't follow the tide. But beyond that, start waking in the night by yourself. I'm not talking about group prayer meeting. Please, don't tell me 10 of you went to the mountain. I want you alone to go to the mountain and come back with something. Don't tell me five of you agreed and God spoke through one, two, three people. What did he say to you? Go talk to God mouth to mouth and tell him, challenge him. Until one day he begins to use things to knock you. Asheka jini, tokeya kuri, gabune nikeso. And he will tell you what you, you, you want to hear. Yes, he reigns forever. Yes. Jesus reigns forever. Verse 16 to 20. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Put it on the screen. The Lord has revealed himself. 
He has executed justice. Striking down what? Now, one of your prayer items is that as he moves in that wind, he should do what? Strike down what? Hello? Are you reading the English? He says, striking down the wicked by the work of what? He's going to use their works to kill them. So, this voting period, this period of election, of uh, running around campaigning, he will use their own work of their hands to strike them down. They will be making mistakes and cancelling themselves one by one. Can you shout amen to that? That scripture is one of your prayer item. So write it down. That's why I'm reading it. The Lord has revealed himself. You know, I told the Lord and the Lord was standing quietly and looking down at Kenya. Until I sat on the ground, then he revealed himself. So it meant, as long as I put my leg and say, and do that tired prayer, Oh Lord, you know you are our last hope. And then I sleep off. Lord, you know we have suffered a lot. Lazily with my full stomach. My friend, go and start fasting. Go and start crying. Let him feel you. Even if after you finish fasting, you have to take vitamin C and vitamin D3 because of your age. You have to take calcium. Take it, but fast. You have to take omeprazole. Even when you don't have ulcer. You have to take, a, what do you call that medicine? Somebody, the scone. Something, something. Scone. Eh? Glass. Gaston. Gascon. Eh, eh, Gascon. To help soften the hungry void stomach so that your bowels can move properly because of gas bring all those things or you want to buy gas reducing teas when you finish fasting calm your belly and say belly is the day of the lord the lord needs this temple now yeah and when you are doing tell god because of you i'm taking gas cone because of you i'm taking this i wasn't taking you my friend please lord and see whether god will do something I sat on the ground. I sat on the ground. I mean, when I say, there is nothing special about sitting on the ground. I wish you saw me sit on the ground. You will know what I mean. I said, Ubangiji, where, do I, where are we going to? If you will not save us, kill us from now. Don't let us die by the hands of these people. Why are we running away from uh, uh, Fulani bandits? And our own indigenous conspirators who bring them to kill us. You kill us. Don't you have a hand? Why are you waiting for them to, to kill us for you? Kashemu de Kanka. Kai Umazaka Kashemu Wakatsede Wanabu. And I sat on the ground. And I won't be comforted. I said, Lord, I will continue disturbing you until I hear the report in Kenya. Now, before the report came from Kenya, he says, stand up. Your prayer is, go and eat, clean yourself, wash yourself. That day I took my family to dinner. Unfortunately, it was at that dinner, I was so about Mamira Arua's death. And it removed the dinner again. I couldn't eat. We were actually on the table. I was breaking a fast. My friend, let's get back there and get God to work in Nigeria. Let's stop this lazy prayer. Let's stop the radio prayer. And let's pray those scriptures. Put the scripture on the screen. The Lord has revealed himself. He has executed justice. Striking down the wicked by the work of their hands. In, in, it didn't say by his own hand. He used their own hands to bring justice to them. By the work of their hands. Everybody. Shall we read that? The wicked will return back to soil. All the nations that forget God. God is going to push them back to hell. I didn't hear somebody say amen. amen. Verse 18, everybody. For the oppressed will not always be forgotten. Please underline that and use that as a key scripture. Bring it before the Lord. Lord, you said the oppressed will not always be forgotten. Forgotten, But in Nigeria, they are always forgotten. 
They are only bought during the election. They give them takeover to sell their grandfathers and their generations. And after which they have forgotten. Tell God in Nigeria this scripture is not true. Tell God this scripture is a lie in Nigeria. They are always forgotten. Eh? There is no regime that has, uh, that has remembered the oppressed. That was what I spoke over Kenya. I'm using, I'm giving you the exact scriptures I used for Kenya. I went on the ground. I told God, remember, remember the Kiberia slum. Remember this, this slum. I know the three slums in Kenya. I call them and they are poor. Father, if you know the politicians always dash their money and millions die without anybody caring, my God, this time, let their spirits rise up and interfere in this election. Tell God they are always forgotten. Tell God this is the opposite in Nigeria, except if you do something. The Bible says, everybody, the next voice, the, the next scripture, the, the next words, it says, the hope of the afflicted, afflicted will not perish forever. Only you can stop it from perishing forever. So it's our business to make sure this time around, the clock ticks differently. Can we go on, please? Verse 19. Everybody shout it out. Rise up, Lord. Now, I want to ask you, who has always prevailed in Nigeria? Man. The hand of man. They come, they intimidate us. Somebody will come and intimidate me with imprisonment. I'll keep quiet. They will send a policeman to deal with me, and I keep quiet. But this time, every man who intimidates us shall be cut off. I didn't hear somebody say amen. Amen. Everybody shout it to the heavens. Oh yeah? Put that scripture. Let's read it. Everybody shout it. Rise up, Lord. Do not let man prevail. Let the nations be judged in your this verse was the verse I used to raise the altar that stood over Kenya. I said, Lord, rise up, Lord. Do not let man prevail in Kenya. Let the nations be judged in your presence. Let everybody see that Muslim, Christian, Hindu, everybody, righteous, unrighteous amongst them, you set your throne, judge everybody equally. Not because they are Muslims or Christians. How many of you are ready to pray that kind of prayer? I beg you, don't pray religious Christian prayer. Tell you to judge both the Muslims, Christians, Hindus, everybody. If the Kegites under the influence of pan wine could start singing about Jagaba, how many of you read that story? Eh? They sang about Jagaba and were less so in Kaha to warn them to be respectful of elders. So even in their pan wine anointing. They were telling God not to let the hand of man prevail. And they are Kegites. They are more righteous than you. And all your Christianity, who will not sit and tell God, sit down. I don't care which God you serve. If he does righteousness, let him sit in Nigeria and win elections for us. How many of you say amen to that? That will be the test of a true God, whether there is a father watching over this nation. Send this step everywhere. I'm not afraid of it. Send it everywhere. That of Kenya was sent everywhere. The church, everybody must go back who can call upon God and get the hand of God. Save us from the hand of man. Everybody, let's repeat that verse again because that's a key altar verse. Then you use all the other verses for argument. Rise up, Lord. Do not let man prevail. Let nations be judged in your presence. Verse 20. Everybody. Put terror in them, Lord. Let the nations know. How about what else do you want? How 
many of us are going to dedicate ourselves to this prayer? If you didn't have the scripture, now you have it. All towers must go and repeat this prayer. They must declare fasting. Then you repeat it in your bedroom at night and then start a regiment of prayer for three months. Your own regiment now. That the Holy Spirit is put on you. If it makes you go outside the gate to go and sit on the floor, sit on the floor to hold the doors, hold the doors, hold trees and tell God, rise up. Let man not prevail. This scripture keeps on talking about man not prevailing. This was a scripture that God used to help win the Kenyan election. So if you have a problem, go to the God who set his presence in Kenya. That is why even in the last day when they were announcing the, the, the result, they almost couldn't announce it. There was still fighting going on between the chief electoral people. It was three against four. The two candidates qualified, except that the constitution makes the electoral whatever makes provision for the one with the higher vote to still be announced since he qualifies. Instead of making them go to another war of a fresh election. And they said no. Against all odds, because they know how much they try to cheat to disqualify the other man who eventually won. Including arresting and killing electoral officers. Including police harassing the officers, the electoral officers in their own offices. National electoral officers. So the chairman said, I'm tired. I'm not going to go through this again. I'm tired. We will announce, since the constitution also agrees with us, that a simple majority will go ahead. They say, but if we are voting, the four of us have voted you out. Let's announce a repeat. He said, no, it's not about four. The constituency says the simple majority can go on. That covers the whole area. They said, no, four of us disagree with you. And then go to court. The four walked out. The man went and announced his result. Now, it means now the battle is a battle of the gods. That's why I say go and fight. It's a battle of spirits. Continue to pray for Kenya. How many of you have watched their television? The poor people came on television and said they are not dying for any rich man again. It's answered prayer. They are not dying for any man again. That they have done their vote and they are satisfied. People from all the same tribes, the tribes, so including the tribes of the president, they said they are not voting again. They are rich people. The new fight is a rich man problem. We poor people, we have told you what we want. We are not going to die for any of you. Go to the court. Whoever court says is his own, we agree. But we are not going to die for anybody. Meaning that the poor man is sending it back to the throne that gave them the election. Now, who are the midwives that advise that throne? You and me, watchmen. So go back to the throne and sit with God and be watching what God is doing. And watch that prayer through. That for once the poor man will have a voice in Africa. I repeat, that is the first time the poor man will have a voice in Africa. If the Kenyan one succeeds. It will send fear into others. That the majority of the wicked will not always win election in Africa. It will send fear to South Africa. Please, I want you to note that scripture. It's the most important scripture in all of the preaching today because that was a scripture I used throughout that week almost consistently and persistently. Sometimes I found myself crying with it. I find, found myself crying with it. Just put Isaiah eleven fourteen, and let's just close our Bible and give thanks for tonight. And I'll ask you to permit me to stop part one here. And I'll come to part two in our next meeting, which will not be as long. We had so many things we had to do tonight before getting to this. Isaiah eleven fourteen. Shall we all read? Is that Isaiah eleven fourteen? Let's read. But they will swoop down 
on the Philistines' flank to the west. Together, they will plunder the people of the east. They will extend their power over Edom and Moab, and the Ammonites will become their subjects. Is that Isaiah? Is that Isaiah we are reading or Psalm? They will swoop down. Let's ask God to swoop down. Let them swoop down on Nigeria. Let the angels swoop down on Nigeria. Put the uh, uh, the King James version. All the others, it was HJB, but uh, hell. But they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines. Fly upon their shoulder towards the east. They shall spoil them of the east together. They shall lay their hand upon Edom and Moab and the children are, uh, uh, and the children of Amnon shall obey them. Is that what Obia was looking for? After they have swooped down, the children of Amnon will obey them by force. So let's ask God to sweep down. That's why I kept on saying strike down. You will notice the scriptures I've shared with you has to do with striking. Striking. This is the season for striking. The Lord will give you all trials. Can we thank God for this morning? Let's just give him glory. I've already blessed you with the blessing that the Lord put in my mouth to bless you to go and prosper. And today, we have remembered our sister. We have capped up the remembrances today. There are other things we are going to do for her children that we didn't announce that I will discuss later with the executive we didn't announce publicly we didn't want to steer any more hope or emotion maybe with time you get to know or you may never know but let's just give thanks for this morning let's give praise and please pray for those three families the pastor Essien's family uh, the pastor from Makodi what is his name again Huh? Shout it loud. Johnson. Can somebody help him? Johnson. Johnson. Uh -huh. Johnson. Please write that name, the Johnson family. And then uh, the Arua family. Let's pray for their families. Carry them with you in your heart. And then pray for Nigeria. Pray for Nigeria. Now, listen. Starting from the coming week, all towers. You either join us in the headquarters and start praying three times a day for Nigeria for, till the end of the year, together, or you must divide work to one another. Everybody has a work to do during the week. You make a calendar for everybody. If that is easier for your tower, but everybody must find his place in the tower. Either to sit down early in the morning or to wake up at midnight or by mid-afternoon and take these scriptures before the Lord and say, God, this time this cycle won't pass us by. Apart from whatever God commands you as an individual. All towers, it's a command. It doesn't... It doesn't change whatever routine you already have led by the Holy Ghost. It's a command. And those of you God had ordained to give birth through you concerning this matter can go an extra mile to hear from the Lord what is God's will. If God begins to speak to you about his will, not your head, write it to us or send it to us. Let us judge it together. And let's go back to prayer and seek God's face. Is that okay? If we are clear about God's will, we will announce it to the whole nation. And we will call other Christians to stand with us. But all the pastors talking, like that song we were about to sing and I stopped. Have we sought God's will? Can you take that song as a last song? How can you run when you don't know the way of the Spirit? How can you walk when you don't...
don't know the way of the wind. How can you fly like the eagles when you don't know the way? The power of walking you, changing everything in a beast to fly. You need to change everything to do this. Changing everything in a beast to fly. Tonight, come to the school of the spirit. Don't you know? In his hands is the key to eternal life. To live to him and to live to death. Or to see the period come. Is that fucking you? Changing everything. Listen, I was going to wear a brand new dress today. And the Lord said, Why will you dress gaily? When there is nothing to rejoice over. In the nation there is nothing to rejoice. The people are not seeking my will. And you are about to go and talk about that. And you are dressing in a glistering way. He said my son go back. This dress I wear was what he commanded me to wear. I would have worn a worse dress than this. To show a protest. And a lamentation. He said you are trying to look like a very successful man. When your country is not successful. When your country is, is struggling. When you are still struggling to get people to do God's will. When there is death everywhere, you are going to dress gaily. He said, God will choose for you a dress. I'm telling you why I'm standing like this. And you will notice these are covenant dresses. Those of you who know this dress. You will see the badge there, then you will recognize it. He said that many of you, even if you see 20 times, you won't remember where it came from. But those of you who are diligent will know where this dress came from. You will know exactly where we bought it. Look at it again. It's a covenant of Shiloh. You can't buy this dress anywhere else in Israel except in Shiloh. I started looking for dresses. Black and black self. I brought, look, if you go to my wardrobe now, many dresses are on the floor. And God will say, no, no. Until I found this trouser, I said, that is a trouser. And I took another 20 minutes to find this one. But I had other ones that were white, including that of the youth, the one I was to wear on the day of Zion. There was one with a lion head that I was gifted. I was going to wear that tonight. God said, no. Until I found this. So I want you to go like an ordinary man. You must not show off anything until the day I usher myself, I utter my voice. I said, Lord, what did you say? He said, you must not show off anything until the day I do what? Utter my voice. You are rejoicing when there is nothing to rejoice about. Living in the realms of positive confessions. While the enemy is taking over everything. You think your noise will overwhelm the noise of the other people? It will not. Their noises are always louder than your own when they start making it. My friends, go back to the throne. And let's bring God down with us. And march through Nigeria with God. When we do that... A new nation will be born. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Please get this tape. Listen to the end. Get the challenge. Take snippets of it at a proper. And send it round. Because it will not be put on television. God is not happy with the church in Nigeria. Even the prayer movement. They are not starting from the place of repentance. And when they are repenting. They are not repenting for selling 
God off. You say, how did they sell God? Don't you remember that Israel sold off God when it asked for a king? They asked for their kind of king. And God said, I will give you the kind of king you are looking for. You are looking for a tall man. You are always looking after the eye. It was after God punished them that he chose his own king. That was what we did in 2015. It is for that sin. It is not written in the Bible that Israel repented. And Saul truly oppressed them. Or did you see in the Bible that Israel repented? That's what Nigeria is doing now. We are not repented for 2015. That we chose a king God didn't choose for us. And we are going as if God is a fool. Ignoring him. And again we want to choose another one for him. I won't join the crowd. You can go ahead and choose your king. But let it be written. That the, prote the, the prophet protested. And he said he won't be part of it. I want to go to heaven. Away with your rejoicing. Any man who has consulted with God. Including our bishops. And archbishops. And all the many 10,000 prophets. Who are seeing things through water and through spirits. Get them come and tell me. Exactly what God said. You see God is answering by thunder. They don't come and tell us what God said. But please. Can we stop rejoicing when God is not dancing yet? And let's stop announcing names God has not announced. Farabale, keep calm. You will soon know the people. That God has chosen to lead us next year. But God said next year he has to write a new constitution. Is that what Obi will help us do? Is that what Atiku will help us do? Is that what Jagaba will help us do? A new constitution must begin next year. I've been consistent about that. We need to write a new agreement. The Igbos must sign that they agree that their interest is covered. The Hausa and the Fulanis and the Mbemabuje must sign that they agree that their interests are recovered. The Bonshu, the Chapman, and then the, uh, the, the Adamawa tribes must sign that they agree. The Meduguri tribes in the south must sign, the Chibok people must sign that they agree without that contract. And then we will all submit ourselves to one Nigeria and work for the future of Nigeria. But until there is a new contract, the 1959 contract and the defaced 1999 contract is very irrelevant to the new Nigeria to the Nigeria of the 24th century Nigeria of the 23rd century even the Nigeria of the 22nd century it's irrelevant we need to sign a new contract paper somebody should tear this present constitution and create a new one if Buhari disagreed whoever comes must do it Atiku won't do it. And I'm not sure Jagaba will do it. Maybe you'll be saying Yirigima Shibab. But then who is God's will? Only God's will can do it and survive it. Want to hear the prophet? That is the voice of the prophet. That is a dust say the Lord. It's a new nation under a new covenant. It has been done before in the Bible. The pattern is in the Bible. A new covenant will I do with you. For the old is now a cake. Behold, I knew do a new thing in your day. It's always founded on the new covenant. Let's go tell the world. Let that become our politics. We should not ignore the abos. Don't ignore anyone in this country. We all have rights in this country. Don't ignore Benue. The man has cried out his heart, bought uniform, a uniform of a general, and they are still mocking him. 
and thinking the Benue people are not important. Don't ignore anybody. Don't ignore Adamawa people. Don't ignore Southern Kaduna people like they are doing. Don't. Until we stop ignoring each other, we don't have a future in this country. Can you raise your hand and say, God, set your throne in Nigeria and let your presence supervise that throne. Let the cry of the downtrodden come to you. Let your spirit strike down the wicked and the path they have created for us. Can you ask God to strike down the path they have created? They have drawn their calendar for us drawn an election that they have already finished rigging I repeat they have drawn an election that between the parties all of them have finished rigging can we ask God to overthrow them and choose a new and a sure way tell God we don't care which way even if it hurts us do it please if you cannot tell God even if it hurts us don't join us in this prayer but do it Let's suffer once and live hereafter. That's my stand as a prophet. And that's what the Lord has spoken to me. We have not touched the real thing yet in this country. And we want victory. Can you say in the midst of this, grow me like a tree planted by the riverside. Ask God to grow you, yourself and your family. And protect us from the evil of the wicked man. And provide our meals when due. And put money in my hands, oh God. Put clothes on my body. And establish my high places. Can you bless the Lord for answering your prayer? Thank you, Lord. Can you take a seed for the salvation of Nigeria? Let's just take one more seed. And as you drop it.